Okay, today we're going to do coax connectors. We're going to concentrate on BNC connectors using RG59 because it's, uh, these are good, uh, good practice tools. This is actually RG59 solid. Um, ideally, we're using RG58 stranded, um, but with these tools, we can actually run through practice. It's a little bit easier um, to crimp these tools, and, and also they're very inexpensive compared to uh, aircraft RG400 uh, series. So these are, uh, again, RG59, BNC. That's important to know, because when I order these guys up, the first thing I need to know is I need to look at the part number. When I look at the part number of uh, this series connector, I, well, it'll give me a spec sheet. On my spec sheet, Mike, I don't know if you can mm -hmm. zoom in on the spec yep. sheet. I wrote myself a couple notes, so uh, to save me a little time. But on the spec sheet that, I, that you can print up, it'll, uh, our data sheet, it'll give me the stripping dimensions. And that's the thing you need. In many cases, they're the same. But in, uh, but uh, several times they're different, especially uh, different cables. And uh, in a lot of cases, they'll give you the specs in uh, metric. Uh, like, for instance, 4 millimeters, 7.7 millimeters, 16 millimeters. I wrote for myself, it's approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch, 5 sixteenths of an inch, 5 eighths. These stripping, stripping dimensions are important because when I look at my center conductor, I need only 3 sixteenths sticking out. So then, when I pull it out of my out of my bag here, I'll have my connector pin, and my connector pin must go directly over that three sixteenths. The three sixteenths will allow it to have enough depth to be inside my window, where I can see the the wire stripped uh, to the window, and then up against the dielectric. The dielectric then can only be five sixteenths, because when I slide in my connector, it's going to slide over the pin and then lock, <coughs> give myself the dielectric's going to slide in the 5 sixteenths into the connector and then the shield is going to go over the top of the 5 eighths, uh, the 5 eighths strip length. That shield will lay over the top and then I'll be able to take my outer ferrule, slide it over and then crimp this onto the ferrule. So you have, with the coax, again you have two separate conductors. You have the inner conductor and you have the outer conductor, the shield. So we're going to go ahead and strip this thing up and uh, make our connections. Now you can use a coax stripper like this. There's several different types for different, uh, several different sizes. Unfortunately this type, um, I'm only going to make one, be able to make one strip dimension. Because this gap here is already 5 8 or 16 millimeters, I can only make the one cut that's going to be from my center conductor to my, uh, to my uh, outside of my shield. So I'm going to set this in. I've already set the depth. I basically raised the one blade because it's at the zero mark. So I'm going to set it so it's right at zero. And then the, the, the blade that's at, uh, at a deeper depth is going to be able to cut. Oh, somebody already moved it on me. Uh, well, let's try this one. <coughs> I'm going to set it in. It sets the depth. And I'll be able to rotate to cut through just the outer, the outer sleeve here. Perfect. Cuts the outer sleeve, and what I don't want it to do is nick through the shield. I don't want to cut any strands. Okay. It cut, and now what it does is leaves my, only my shield. And many times, when you can't just slide it off, you're going to use an X-Acto knife to slice it. So there, an X-Acto knife, slice it. And what it did for me there. It cut my wire to the correct depth. Now this is a blown up version. So I simply redrew it to scale. When I redrew it to scale, you can see 16 millimeters. And I can check it. I stripped off the outer sleeve 16 millimeters. Now my next move, according to my picture, 
I must strip enough shield. So to, to help with the uh, kind of like a cooking show, I'm going to swap real quick. <coughs> and I already did that. I'm going to lay out my, my wire. That was RG58. You can see a, a healthier shield. This is my RG59 for this connector. And you can see my strip lengths. I stripped the outer shield. Then I stripped the shielding itself. And then I had to cut the dielectric. And all that is done simply, I'll show you my old one. I just simply lay it here. And a way to do this, since I need to strip off this much shield, I'll score just the shield itself. Lightly score it. That way I can, because I don't want to damage the dielectric. Now I scored it, now I can just bend it over and simply trim at the length. And then go around. And trim it. Now the RG59 is actually a little easier because of the shield's a lot thinner. And it has a little foil wrap that you also cut. There we go. I cut it. And so I recheck my length. And now I can look and I see 16 millimeters and 7.7 .7 dielectric. And now I need to make one more cut, 4 millimeters, which happens to be 3 sixteenths of an inch. I lay it here. And I just lay my blade. And I go around the dielectric carefully. hard to do from this angle for sure. But that way you can see. Then I'm going to pull it off. <coughs> and you can see I only stripped the dielectric and I check all my lengths. We're on 16 millimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Then on 7.7 mil millimeters, 5 sixteenths of an inch. And then my last, uh, the last part of my wire is 4 millimeters and it's a little short. Um, and where I can trim it again to get that gap. Those are the gaps I need. And here's my 59 that I had stripped earlier. You can see the foil and the uh, little wire. It's a little bit different, but these lengths are actually right on. 16 millimeters, 7.7, .7, the end of the shielding. Then at 4 millimeters, the end of my dielectric. And so it gives me a 4, liter, four millimeter center conductor. So that's set up to place my my uh, uh, my contact. I'm going to do the inner contact first. I lay the inner contact and I check it. Do I see the center conductor protruding through the inspection hole? And I do. Through the inspection hole. And then I see the dielectric up against the dielectric. Perfect. That's how I want it to be and that's how I want to crimp. Make that crimp. So how do I make that crimp? Or what tools do I need to make that crimp? I'm simply going to come over, look at my DMC kit. The same kit we used earlier on MS connectors. I look through my chart and on the very back side it talks about coax cable. Coax cable, the type of wire and the type of connector matters, just like it did with MS connectors. I'm going to look RG59, that's what I'm about to use, and it's a BNC connector. It's a bayonet connector, BNC, RG59, and it tells me my inner contact, I'm gonna, what tool handle I'm going to use. I'm going to use an HX4 with a Y422 die. And I'm going to use the C slot. We'll remember that. And then the outer ferrule, same handle, HX4, but I'm going to use it with a 433 die C slot. Right? So I open this guy up, and I'm going to look for those tools. First of all, it says A23, HX4. That's my HX4. And then I need my die. One die was a 443, the other die was a 422, and that's this die. So again, one of them is for my inner contact, and one of them is for my outer ferrule. So my inner contact is a 422. I need to swap that out. So I'm simply going to come over here and swap it out. To swap out the dies, they have a handy dandy tool in the Daniels kit. I just pop it right here. When I release the handle, it's going to snap it right off. The spring pressure knocks it off. Then you have to get the top one out. The top one out, 
to get it out, you have this little L shape. Just place it on the top and pop it. Okay. Sometimes that works. Once you get it started, then you come on this end and pry it down. All right. So there's my 443. Bye bye. I'm gonna do my 422. Throw it in. Ah. All right. Pop them in. I want to be able to look in, and, and it's really only one way to do it. Um, now it's my inner contact, and it said use slot C. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use slot C. I'm going to take this contact, place it in the slot, simply crimp it. You want to make sure you're not on the, you know, there's a little ledge, that, the ledge on the uh, side of the dielectric. You want to make sure you're not on that. You crimp it. And you take a look. Take a look and you can see that it's crimped. Give it the tug test. And also you look in the inspection hole and make sure that I see the center, the, see the center conductor in the window, which I do. Looks good. So now all I gotta simply do is take the outer ferrule, don't forget it, put it on first, because it needs to slide up over the top. Take your strands. And make sure, see how when I, when I slid that over and a little piece of foil came over the top, well that would have been a direct short, the foil right to the center conductor. So I simply need to just trim that piece of foil off, inspect it to make sure I don't have any strands coming up over that are going to short up to my center conductor. Then <clears throat> I take my connector, my connector is going to go, center conductor is going to go right into the the hole here. Now I'm going to slide it, slide it and slide my strands over the top of the, the outer, the ferrule, so I can line that up. And the ferrule is going to slide over those. Now this is RG59, so you see how uh, it's not nearly as thick as aircraft when you have all this shield. It makes it a lot better, actually, better connection. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't have a center conductor pin for that one right now. So I slide my connector over, make sure it's all the way in. I should see my center pin flush with the top, which it is. It's seated. And then remember, now my outer ferrule had to be crimped with a 443. That Y443, I'm going to crimp it. So again, I need to knock this die out. Simply open the top. Of it. Take the top here, pop it loose. And look at the um, teeth, the, look at my die. Now, it's funny, but sometimes that sheet's not quite right. And if it said C, you could see that it's impossible to get into C. I can look here and see that that's an A die that I, I that, that's the, the hole I need to hit. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to lay it in the A. And when I put it in the A die, I'm going to make sure it's perfectly centered up and that the ferrule doesn't slide on me. So I'm going to use the table to get me started. I'm going to leave the ferrule all the way up. Just get it seated right in the middle of that ferrule. Now I'm going to look at my pin to make sure that didn't slide out. I'm still flush with the top. Still good there. I'm going to hold them all together and just use the table to get it started. Ooh, and it tried to slide on me just like that. So I'm going to use my fingernail, hold it. Hold it and crimp. There we go. All right. Crimp, tug test. I'm going to look here. Look at my... My crimp went all the way around. Looks like a very good crimp. I didn't over crimp it, and it didn't under crimp it. Doesn't spin. Tug test. My pin is all the way flush with the top. That's a good connection. So what I'm going to have you guys do, I'm going to have you do this connector. I want you to turn around and do the opposite connector. I need this coax cable to be one and a half feet long for you to conduct the, the object. To do the object, uh, We'll, we'll do that in 
one second. So that's that connector, and then we'll uh, do the magic of uh, the camera. We'll do the op check in a minute. That's it.